Here we go, door number three from our Crafter's Companion 2022 Advent Calendar. I wonder what it could be. Could it be a stamp? Could it be die? Could it be both? Could it be fold or could it be stencil? Du, 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 du. I didn't actually mean to go into a song there, but it just reminded me of uh, Mika song. Du, 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 anyway, we're not here to sing because we can't sing. We're here to open door number three. So let's dive straight in and see exactly what it is that's going to be behind this door. And then we can get creative and we can create something using said product. So let's dive in. To the folder and let's have a look and see what is behind door number three so let's jump in and let's have a look is it this side don't think so is it that side yes down into here so let's go in Let's open. I think I've established by now that I'm not going to be able to open all the doors neat and tidy. So let's go. Oh, I love that feeling. It's like open up coffee cup and coffee granules, isn't it? Oh, stamp and dice it. Oh, little mittens and a hat. And the dies to go with them. Don't know why I'm acting surprised. We know this year that I know what's behind them. Ooh, but I do love them and I hope you like what we're going to make with them because I thought this time we could do maybe a cute little winter name placement setting for a table or maybe a little festive party that you're going to have kiddies festive party that you might have that could be fun or it could be made into a tag one of which it's up to you so let's go in i'm going to go in. i've just got this is multi-purpose cardstock and it's just um obviously it's not scrap but it's an off cut that i had left so what i'm going to do is let's cut that to five inches by four inches so five inches by four so oh no i can't even do that because it's not quite wide enough for me to do what I was going to do. So let me just get another piece of multi-purpose. So let's get our piece. And now we can cut it to five inches by four inches. So let's go four by five. And then what I'm going to do is let's take now i could have scored on my guillotine but let's just take our scoreboard and then i'm going to score at the halfway mark so let's see if i can find my scoring tool so let's go in at the let's go in at the two and a half mark so halfway, two and a half, and fold. So that is four inches by five inches. And then at that five inch, we have scored at that halfway point at two and a half. So what we can then do is let me just go in a little bit closer. Let's move that out of the way for now and let's bring in the stamp and die set. So, so cute, these ones. I absolutely love them. Three stamps, three dies, six in total, of course. And then what we're going to do is let's take some Nina card stock. So we're going to take some Nina card. I'm going to do what I like to do. And that is, of course, cut first, stamp after. So let's layer all these ones on. And let's secure them. Let's just do, I'm gonna do all three together, just and no more. So let's go in now with our mini. We're gonna use our mini wherever we can throughout December, although all of them, depending on the style that you're using or the size of card and paper, will go through the mini. So there is our die cuts. So then what I'm going to do, sit them to the side for now, 
and then I'm going to take another piece of our Nina. I'm not going to cut it, but we will come and stamp on that as well because we're going to stamp in colour and we're going to do a little bit of fussy cutting. So let's bring in my stamping mat and let's go in with our Noir Black or Flagstone alcohol proof. So let's just go in with Noir Black and we'll go in with our stamps. So we're going to go in with our stamp here. I'm going to use my acrylic block. You can use, of course, your stamping platforms. Let's just turn it the right way, simply because if I do overlap, then I can add to my lovely dirty inky backdrop. So what we're then going to do is I'm going to hover over the top. I'm going to try and not get my head in the way. So hover and then I'm going to stamp. And then there we go. Oh, I love that. That's so cute. So, so cute. So that one can go into the side there. And then while we've got that stamp on, let's stamp it out again. Into place. So don't need that. Let's pop that one back. Of course, if you've got your stamp cleaning kit, you can clean with that. So let's go in with our little hat. Let's just go in, stamp that one, and then we're going to hover over the top, and then stamp, and there we go. And then last, but by no means least, let's take the mittens, or the gloves, that are even attached by the thread, or the ribbon, and let's stamp that out. Let's reapply. And then let's hover until you're happy and then press. So that now gives us all of our stamps and die cut that we need. I take my acrylic block, give that a little bit of a clean, and that is all of these ones good to go. Then what we're going to do is we're going to stick with my favorite pens, the tri-blends. So we're going to use gold brown blend, magenta blend and the ice grey blend. So let's take another piece of card and we can start to do a little bit of colouring. So I'm going to move all of these to the side. So what I am going to do is we're going to colour all of these. So let's start with our scarf and then what I'm going to do <coughs> is let's start at the bottom and this is our gold brown blend so I'm kind of going in the folds of the scarf and then I'm just going to go all the way down that one and then what I'm going to do because these are really small sections I'm going to do section two sections at a time and then what I'm going to do is let's go in. I'm going to do it so the dark tone is towards the top there. Same with the right hand side. Because that will be a dark shadow underneath that fold of the scarf. And we're going to go into the mid. And let's blend that out. Blend that out. And then what I'm going to do is do what we do, blend that out there, and then we've got a blend coming through. That will start to evaporate over a little bit of time. And then what I'm going to do is this bottom part of the scarf, 
I'm going to colour that in. And then I'm going to do the same. Let's just actually do it this section at a time. Then we're going to come along underneath. And then we're going to blend that out just a little bit. And then let's go in with that light to finish it off. And what I'm going to do is this little bit here. And then I'm just going to go in just with a tiny bit. So even really small little bits. You could still go in and add a little bit of shade. And then what we're going to do is we're going to come around all the way around. So this is going to be the gold brown. And that's going to go all the way round into here and that's going to come all the way down into there I'm going to then go in and then I'm going to go in to here with the dark and then I'm just going to add a little bit down into there I'm going to blend that out and then that out and then let's go back and blend that one out and then I want to do just that bit here around what will be the back of the neck and then I'm going to come in at the dark at each edge Let's blend that out and then let's join that together with a little bit of light. So I'm happy with the gold brown blend when it comes to the scarf. Now we're going to mix it up with the magenta. So where it's all white, that's what I'm going to colour with the magenta. So let's lay that light tone down. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to go in so it's going to be darker the top and a little bit further down. You can play on where you want that light source to be. I'm just going to keep it quite simple and straightforward. And then we're going to do the same with this bit here. Now this bit... I'm not going to blend in shade and that's because we're actually going to do a little bit of fussy cutting and this bit is going to be raised up with foam pads. Now I'm not leaving it white because if you were to see underneath the raised decoupage part then you might still see some of the white underneath. So at least lay one colour down. I'm going in with the light tone so there's a bit of colour and then that can be the magenta as well. Let's add a bit of darkness there and then I'm going to add darkness there and there. Blend it out. Blend. Blend. You can preserve your own natural highlight if you want to. But then we've got a little scarf going on there. And then let's go in with the ice grey blend. And then we're going to go all the way round. Follow the edges all the way. And then fluff that at the edge. Finish it off. And then what to do as well is go in to that back bit colour. So we've got our lovely little scarf. So I'm going to set that one to the side. Let's bring in our scarf again. Now the only bit that we are wanting is that middle part around the neck. So let's colour and blend and shade that in. Now this doesn't matter if you go out the lines because we're going to fussy cut it out. This one I'm going to go in along the bottom is the dark tone 
and blend that out and then blend that one out so we can do that fussy cutting well what we could do just now is let's just snip that out and we'll fussy cut it all later so let's take our hat now and then what we're then going to do is let's take our gold brown blend again and this time we're only going to go at the top of the hat when it comes to the gold brown and you can do each panel individually if you want to um no i'm just coloring it all one color and blending and shading that one and then let's join them together so we've got that roundness when it comes to the shadow and then going to go in with the magenta for the bottom so a bit of a different color combination for this one as in this whole project not just the hacks and over done the scarf the same and then I'm going to go in to the left, to the right. You could have it so that the darkness is coming along the rim if you want to. Let's blend that and then that. And then we're going to go in and let's do the same with this one. So I'm going to extend that light tone around the fluff. And then I'm going to go in with the dark tone. We're going to blend that out and blend that out. And then you've guessed it. We're going to go around with our ice grey. And there is our hat that's complementing our scarf. But then what we also want to do is, if I go back to that bit, we really didn't need to blend it and shade it because we're going to do that on this bit and then we're going to fussy cut it out. So let's do that again here. So let's lay that colour down. So going in with the light, dark, and then blend that out with the mid tone, and then finish off again with the light. Of course, the alcohol will evaporate, so it will start to blend a little bit more within a few moments so we can then set that one to the side for now we don't need all of that so let's just snip that away and we'll fussy cut just shortly let's just take these ones and i know it's we're only going to do kind of like the cuffs of the gloves so let's set that to the side and with the little gloves go into the gold brown blend And we're going to go around the bottom of the cuffs and then we're going to go across that design there. And I'm just going to do a tiny little bit of dark underneath, in the corners, in the corners, dab a little bit of mid. And then blend that out. Now the cuffs we are going to fussy cut. So what I'm going to do, like I've done with the scarf, and I really should have done with the hat, not that it matters. I'm not going to blend it. I'm only going to lay down one colour. And then with the actual mittens themselves, 
let's colour that in magenta and then I'm going to go dark underneath dark underneath we're going to blend that out blend that out like so and then we can do the same with this one so let's lay it down let's lay it down there too let's go in with that dark this would look lovely if you've done it in watercolour card maybe come in with some sparkle Oh, in actual fact, there's an idea of what I could do. We could add a little bit of sparkle overlay. So now let's go all the way around with my ice grey too. Try blend or classic. Does not matter or illustrator it's whichever tip you prefer we're then going to go in we're going to infill all of that all the way around so we've got a highlight that we can see here so let's move that one out the way let's bring in this little bit here and then we are going to blend and shade that light tone and then I'm going to go the dark on this side from right to left dark on this side from left to right mid tone to blend to blend light to blend and then that is the cuffs of our mittens. So I'm going to set them to the side as well. And then before I do any fussy cutting, what I'm going to do is cut a couple of strips here. Now let's take our light tone from the magenta. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to colour in a strip. And you'll see why in a moment. So let's take that strip. So that was just with the light with the magenta. And we're going to do the light with the gold brown. So once again colour it onto a strip. If you've got your class H, you can use your chisel nib if you want to. And the size that I'm going is going to work with what I'm away to cut just shortly. So there's my two strips. So then what we can do is let's sit that out the way for now. I'm going to zoom out and then let's take our little snippy scissors let's move that that and that out of the way so let's bring all this back in let me zoom in that a little bit more so let's go around what we're wanting to cut with a scarf so all I'm going to do is cut right up to the black line and work our way. And I want to see that black line, so that's why I'm cutting on the outside of it. Like so. And then we can do the same with the hat. And like anything and everything, this is optional. 
This isn't something you have to do. Please don't feel as though you have to. But it can add a little bit extra depth and dimension by adding a little bit of fussy cutting somewhere. A little bit of height. So there is our hat. And then we can go in with the cuffs of our mittens. And equally, you don't have to fussy cut these bits. You can choose other parts for you to fussy cut. And let's just work our way there. We're going to do the same with this one. Work our way all the way. Finish that one off. So there's all our little bits. So that we can set up to the top. And then what we're going to do is let's bring back in these strips. Let's go in with our Gemini mini alphabets. And I've lost the Y, but thankfully I don't need the Y. So let's do Sarah's name. Seeing she's on the front of the advent calendar. So this was big enough to fit her name. And so once I cut her name, it's, go it's going to color coordinate with the full project. Let's just pop that one on, enough to hold it. I'm going to lift that in and feed that one through. And we're still going to do our drop shadow, hence why I've cut a strip within the gold brown blend. So carefully taking that off. Pop out our letters. Now if you do this straight after colouring it, what can happen is the ink will maybe transfer onto the inner part of your die, which is absolutely fine. You just need to ensure that you give it a little wipe. But that's only if you were to use it straight away. Obviously, I've given it a little bit of a time to dry, so that's not going to happen. It's just if you go and cut it again into like a light card or a white card, that's something you just need to take into account. So we've got Sarah. And then let's do that again. I don't really need to put them in order because, well, it doesn't matter. But let's do it anyway. So this is taking that out there. There and then there. So if I take, oh, there we go. And then if I take the A, let's pop that one out. Let's take the R. And then we just need to do one more A. So let's take that one, let's take that one, and then feed that one through. There we go. So I'm just going to pop that there, pop that there so I don't lose them. Now if you've seen me using the alphabets in the past, you know that I've Oh, we said usually I just cut the whole alphabet at once and store all the additional letters. But because I coloured my piece of cardstock and there was only certain bits that I wanted, that's why I've just picked them off. But usually if I'm just cutting them in white, I'll do the whole alphabet in a one -er. 
So we've got Sarah in our magenta and also our gold brown blend. So that's all those little bits. So let's bring back in our little panel. And then what I'm going to do, because I want a little bit of texture, you can, it says that I'm here, you can use your linen card, white linen card, or if you don't have any linen card, you can still use your um, watercolour card because it's got some texture to it. So that is now four by two and a half. So let's cut that to, let's go to, so two and a half. So let's do two and a quarter. There we go, before, two and a quarter by three and three quarters. And then what I'm also going to do, I'm going to create a matting layer and I'm going to use my tri-blend, my magenta. Now of course it doesn't have a chisel nib to it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use my ruler, just going to make sure that my edge is clean. And then what I'm going to do is right up against the edge. I'm going to go in with the dark, dark tone for this one. You can do any tone, any colour. And then what I'm going to do, right up to the edge, I'm going to touch it with a line. So it goes up to the edge, maybe about a millimetre or so, overlapping that we can see here and draw a line. Now if you've got your chisel nib illustrator then you can just run the chisel nib all the way around but if you don't and you want a matting layer to coordinate nice little way to do that you can see here, perfect coloured matte and layer. I'm just going to clean any excess ink off my ruler. So now that we have got this one, let's go in with our tape. And I'm going to add this one on. I'm going to open it up to make it that little bit easier and press that in and then what we can do is let's position them like so let's get them at a little bit of an angle I'm going to use my tacky glue for that one so let's go in remember with the tacky glue very, very little. Very little indeed. So we're just going to press that while I take a drink. Hold that one in. Now none of these I'm going to lift on foam pads because of course we've got our little fussy cut decoupage that we're going to pop onto foam pads. So let's pop that one on. And I did say, didn't I? What about adding a bit of sparkle? Let's do that. So let's go into these ones. And then we can go into there. And press that in. And then let's go in with a little fussy cutting. And then let's see, tiny little foam that I can cut. So snip and then snip. So these are three, three millimetres. 
millimeters in depth. These ones. Let's pop that all the way there. Let's take these ones as well. Pop that one on. And then we just need a couple of small ones for the back of the little mitten. Let's press that one on. And we're going to press that one on into place. And then what we can then do is let's take these off. We're going to lift that up. And this is where I was saying it's still worthwhile adding some colour underneath. Because if you tilt it to the side, that means you're still going to see some colour instead of it just being white. So let's go in and then we can overlap that one. And then we can take our last couple. I'm going to, make the detail, so I'm going to use that as a guide. So this one, now I can remember what one goes where because this one is going from, so the dark shade is within the middle and then it's getting lighter that way and then it's getting lighter that way. So I know that dark shade is towards that right hand side. And then with this one, that is the same. So we've got that one now. So let's add a little bit of sparkle. It wasn't what I originally thought or planned, but let's go for it. So let's add, let's add something there too. Let's add sparkle onto the magenta part of the scarf. There, and there, and there. Let's add magenta onto the little cuffs. And then let's add magenta just onto that pom-pom. But actually, I tell you what, let's go for it. Let's go for it. Let's add it onto there. And although that I have stamped, with alcohol proof ink pad because I'm not spending too long layering the coat of sparkle it's not going to bleed or it's not going to bleed out so we've then got there we've got we've got our little sparkle twinkling away and then let's go in last but by no means least what I'm going to do is because these are small and that can make it harder sometimes to do a drop shadow. I'm going to stick each layer on first. So the brown, the gold brown is going to be my drop shadow. So therefore I'm going to stick that on first. So let's do, let's get them into a position that we want. And if you're not good at getting it a straight line, then purposely put them at a jaunty angle. So I'm happy with how that's going to be. So let's go in and then I'm going to take my tacky glue. And as you can see there, I went direct onto my cardstock not the back of my little alphabet, which you can do. As long as you kind of know where you're going, that works. Plus the tacky glue dries clear. You're not going to see it. And then as you see anyway, I dab with my finger afterwards. So if there was any excess, it's just going to come off onto my finger. So let's do the R. So let's pop that one on. Give that a little wiggle in. Move that 
into place and then let's go in with our A. I'm going to do the same. So now I've got that base. What we can then do is let's come in and then over the S and let's pop our magenta and then pull it down slightly what we can see here so it's another way in which you can do drop shadows direct onto your project so then that one pop on pop on and then don't be scared to give it a wiggle about because if anything that can only help because then what it does is it lightly spreads that layer of glue that you've just popped down that then lightly spreads it onto the back so the R so popping it on giving it a little wiggle about then dropping it into position like so and then last by no means least we can come in with our A once again pop that one on wiggle it into place and then when you're happy tab the excess off let's just pull that in once again and then if you want to let's go over the magenta with a clear sparkle overlay like so and then there we go door number three from our scarf mittens and our little cozy hat so it could be a little placement setting it could of course be made into a little gift tag that we can see here or it could be a card if you want to if you give flowers to someone what a nice wee card that we can see here but that was using the scarf the mittens and the hat stamp and die from door number three we've used our gemini mini alphabets and then we have used gold brown magenta and ice grey too that's all your tri blends and then we've also used our clear sparkle overlay and then there we go we card we gift card placement setting whatever it is that you like with the depth that little bit of fussy cutting there we go so i hope you enjoyed that one from door number three do stay tuned because what comes after three of course is door number four that's going to be uploaded again tomorrow ready for you to open and craft away and then we will be live come the fifth so we will be opening door number five live here from home in my craft room and we'll get creative as well thank you so much for watching this video really really do appreciate it and we'll see you later on for door number four